Welcome to our Symmetrics Advanced Training for W Series Remotes webinar. My name is Tony Cochran. I'm a technical sales engineer at Symmetrics. And today I will be going over our four IP based wall controllers the W1, the W2, the W3, and the W4. This class of wall remotes can replace our RS 485 based ARC modular wall remotes in most cases. In Composer software, the W series are found in the toolkit, the same way any other unit like our DSPs or expansions or other IP-based controls are, right here under IP-based remotes. And the way to place a W series remote control is to double click on the W remote control in the toolkit from these four choices available, or simply drag and drop into the site view. I've got four of them already in here. When you place the unit, you'll notice that it has an icon that looks like the W series remote you're going to work with. So it's easy to keep track of it in the site file. The right click menu on the icon contains among other items, open unit properties, design notes, flash LEDs when you need to find it, locate hardware, and enable disable unit. These are actually all disabled right now. You see that X through them. Just like any uh, other units that we have before a valid IP address is assigned, you can double click on this unit to open the properties dialog. After the IP address has been assigned, double clicking will open the diagnostic module. Which doubles as the simulator. And you'll notice that the unit properties is bolded when it's not assigned. And that's going to change and bold up this open when it is assigned so that it's going to be the default action for double click. So just click on the locate box to locate, and we'd be able to locate any of these that we had on the network, just like anything else we have any DSPs. You'd see the little green check mark once it's located. Unit properties for our W series remotes are almost exactly like our DSP unit properties dialogs, but it doesn't include anything specific to DSPs like the external control inputs or IO cards that usually show up in this area. It does include a button called edit remote settings to allow editing of each specific type of the W series remotes. Some of these settings may also be edited from the design view properties window. Uh, for any selected unit once that's placed, but we'll go over that a little further into the presentation. Main setting that, uh, we'll start with the W1 here. So the main setting that a W1 can be programmed for is the action of the encoder button. There are two basic modes, depending on if the user is trying to allow the W1 to support a single encoder menu and a single button menu or multiple virtual encoder menus, or what you might know as select and set. So the first thing you want to know is how do you want to use the W1 and set the encoder button mode in the edit W1 settings dialog. The default that comes up is encoder button menu. So we'll start with that. So for the encoder button menu operation, once it's pushed, there is a timeout for the unit to return to the encoder menu operation. So the button is a push and the encoder menu operation is the twist. The default in the drop down menu is five seconds. You can choose from one to 30 seconds. We'll just go ahead and leave that five seconds. To start the programming, I'm going to open the simulator for the W1. And I'm going to enter the design view by double clicking on the DSP. Let's get that simulator back up. Okay. To assign a module using the encoder and encoder button menu mode, just double click the module you want to assign the encoder action. So I'll just choose this simple mono gain. I'm going to right click on the parameter and choose Setup to Remote Control. 
Notice the selection in the drop down menu right here is encoder menu. So I'll assign that. And you notice the overlay shows that it's assigned. And in the simulator, you can see that it's assigned. Now you can assign the button action. So we'll just do the mute. Right click on the parameter again, choose set up to remote control. Notice the selection now in the drop down is encoder button menu. There is also the choice here for encoder menu. That's because you could assign the button to be triggered from a push of the encoder like a button, but you could also choose, if it wasn't already assigned, you could choose to assign it from a twist of the encoder so that if you twist the encoder, it would trigger the button mute on off. Uh, in this case, we've already assigned the twist action of the encoder to the volume. So we'll assign the button push action for the mute button. And now we'll be able to see in the simulator that I can move my fader, I can click on the mute, and there is that timeout. It's going to wait to come back to the fader operation again. Now in my setup, it's remote control dialog, uh, which I will bring back up. You will notice uh, that all the W series remote control units which have been placed in the site view and can be configured for these actions are available. You'll notice there's no W2 because Composer will automatically show you what you can and can't use for a given module. So my next move, if I'm programming a W series remote, might be to start looking at the W1 remote menu properties over here, but I'm gonna save that for later. So instead, let's try and set up the W1 for select and set. So I'm gonna clear all these settings. Clear menus, basically clear it out completely. Let's go ahead and go into my remote control manager. Clean this up so that I can start over. Now my W1 shows unassigned again. So for the select and set, this time I'm going to right click on W1. I'm going to choose unit properties. And then from edit remote settings, I'm going to choose the encoder menu select instead of the default encoder button menu. I'm going to leave the require confirmation unchecked in this demonstration, but please notice that the timeout option is available for encoder button menu only, and the require confirmation is available for encoder menu select only. Go ahead and click OK. Notice now also that my menu says unassigned one, so of the eight menus available, this is the default menu, number one, that will show on wake. Uh, if there's a security enabled and it, and it wakes, this will show on wake number one. You can actually change this to wake to any of the eight menus. So it could come up as number two menu as, as, as what shows on wake if you want. So to program the select and set, make sure I'm in design view. I am in design view. Double click on a module to make the assignments. And now, it, it doesn't actually have to be for just one module for these faders. I just, I'm just going to use that for the purposes of the demonstration. I use this eight channel gain. So I'm gonna right click on these faders and click set up to remote control. Okay, encoder menu one comes up. You'll notice that the eight menus are available from the select wall panel controller dropdown. Quickly set these up. Okay, and now I have, if I click on the button, I'm going to be able to push through the cycles to show the assignments, to show the parameter to be adjusted. This is the select and set, so gain one, 
move that, click, gain two, click on the button, push the button, gain three, gain four, and so forth through all eight. Now I'm going to move on, keep moving on here to the W2 programming. Uh, again, available to drag from the toolkit. I've already got this one placed. I'm going to go ahead and make sure I clear out all my, my remote control numbers just so I don't have anything in the way. Now, the W2 is the simplest of the W series remotes. Can open properties and the edit remote settings. Doesn't have a special mode for the encoder like the W1 and the rest of them. Just options for the view for the uh, display. So to program this, I'm going to go back into design mode. And again, these button assignments don't have to be from the same module. For this demonstration, I'm just going to set up with this four channel mixer. Let me fix that. <laughs> OK. Now we got the mute buttons here. I'm going to right click on these mute buttons, set up to remote control. Now, remember before I pointed out that the there was a W series remote that didn't show up before when it wasn't available to assign. Now you notice that the W1 doesn't show up for these button assignments. And also notice that what is available, button menu and radio button menu, those are available in the dropdown. So Composer auto adjusts to things that you can do for these W series remotes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just assign these. Notice that they come up right away, quickly assign. And I have my mute buttons. And they work right away. Go ahead and remove those settings. And do the uh, show you the radio button that I showed before in the drop down that was available. Okay. So clear menus. And this. Okay, go to the next module, which is the radio button. Now for the radio button, I'm gonna use, just as a, to show you, I'll use this four button radio module and I'm gonna assign the slider to the first button. This is actually really fast. Here's my W2. Notice what the slider W1 shows up is available, but I'm gonna pick my W2. I'm gonna pick radio button menu, click okay. It brings up my simulator, and you notice it's already all assigned. I just had to assign to the slider, and I have my radio button actions. Notice we have our little LED showing for the radio button. You can tell. We'll go over the uh, properties and display options a little bit later. I'm going to keep moving right along and get into the W3 programming. Again, I'll clear out my remote. So the W3 is basically a combination of the W1 and the W2, that simulator. But for the main programming of the encoder, there is a new option to the programming. In addition to the encoder being able to be used as a, a one-time button and a one-time knob, or select and set from the encoder, for the eight parameters, you can also use uh, set the W3 to select and set for the four buttons on the face of the unit instead of the button pushes on the encoder. Now you've already seen how to assign the encoder for the encoder button menu and the encoder menu select. So I'm gonna show you on this W3, the new menu setting, it's called encoder button menu select and set version. So I need to set the W3 for this mode. I'm gonna go to the Again, right click, um, go to the unit properties, go to edit remote settings. And I'll leave the encoder button mode as encoder button menu, but the new option to change to is select and set using individual buttons. Again, this can be from different modules. 
going to use this four channel gain module right here and assign the faders. Going to right click, set up to remote control, pick my W3, and you'll see the select and set menu show up in the select wall panel controller. Again, only shows you what you've got available and what you want to program with. Let's go ahead and assign these, set up to remote control. And now when I push the button, the encoder, the twist action, is the select and set option. And you can see the new operation here that we have available for the W3. I'm gonna remove this programming now, keep moving on. I'm gonna quickly set up the W3 to act as a combination W1 and W2 like I, I told you it could act like. So I'll go to edit, oops, it's clear menus. And then just remove all my remote controls. Okay, again, you see unassigned, ready to go. So imagining that modules are in different places in your programming, but you need to be able to access them from the W3, I'm just gonna use the four channel for the mutes and the eight channel mixer for the faders. So we actually need to make sure that we set the W3 for this our encoder menu select. Okay. Set up to remote control, W3, button menu, radio button menu, and encoder menu are all available in this. I'm going to be setting up my button menus, the mutes, and it will auto assign to the buttons. And then if I were in another module and I wanted to set my select and set, set up to remote control, this time encoder menu, because it's a fader, encoder menu is what's available quickly set up my faders. Need to remove that, move that over. Okay, so now I have my mutes. So this is the W2, and if I had a separate W1, I could have the action of the select and set for the W1. As I click on the encoder, and now I have basically a split operation for the W3. Okay, I'm gonna move on to the W4. Again, I'm going to clear out my remote control numbers just so I have a nice clean view. and move to the W4. So the W4, we get the same capability as the W3, but with four added buttons. You could set up the button select so that button pushes control the action for the encoder. That's the twist, so a button push here controls what you're of volume control here, just like we did for the W3, but you'd have eight buttons instead of four. Um, for this setting, go to the unit properties, choose edit, remote settings, and set for encoder button menu, select and set. And then we'll go ahead into the eight channel gain module. Notice the drop down, the choices select and set. Encoder. Let 
me make sure that I set this correctly. Cutter, button menu, select and set. I did that. Not, I did that uh, the wrong way. Let's try this. Try it this way. So now we'll see that the menu says cutter menu gain. And we'll set those. Um, another way to set this up is for the gain module is kind of a reverse where we would set up the encoder button push to trigger through the volumes and the W4 buttons are assigned to mutes instead of choosing what the encoder is set to. So in order to set this up, we'll go in and set it up for encoder menu select. Set Tremo control. Okay. Move quickly through this. This is the I see what I did. Okay. Let's try this again and choose the correct W series remote, which would help. That's a W4. <laughs> okay. It's pretty quick to be able to reassign though. Okay, and we have those assigned, and then the mutes button menu one through eight. Very quick to assign these. I'm just hitting enter, set up to remote control, and enter, and relying on the auto function to give me my mutes and my gains that. Now, before I was trying to set this up um, with the select and set, and I didn't do that. So let's, let's do that quickly. I was choosing the wrong remote. So clear these menu items out and click OK. Make sure this is set. to select and set, and then we have for the W4, select and set, which was what I was looking for before. We set these up quickly. I can right click on the fader. Okay, this is where I get my eight buttons. All right, there we go. Gain one, gain two, gain three, gain four, and then the four more to choose from. Okay, so, and, oh, and also note with the W2, W3, W4 series remotes with the buttons, you can mix and match some of these control types. I've been assigning them pretty strictly. You could have a radio button for one and two, a momentary for three, a preset for four and et cetera. You can, you can set these buttons up individually. They do not have to be all the same. So when you're setting it up, you do see in some cases, if I were to go clear this menu, clear menu, and bring it back to the default, go to set up to remote control, you may see, let's go ahead and give it the coder menu select, okay. So when you're assigning these, I'll just go for a button. 
able to do. Yeah. So when you're saying like a button, you'll see you can do a button menu. You could choose button menu for one. Number two, you'd see the same menu. You'd say radio button for two and three and a preset or something else. So they're very configurable that way. I'd like to talk, talk about the properties window, which we weren't talking about before too much. So I'm going to move back to the W1 and show some of the display configuration since it's got the simplest display. Um, there are many ways to display, uh, configure the display shown. I can change the display to show text, symbols, I can turn off the display. I can swap these items, the value and the parameter. I can change various components of the display, like font, custom font, the size of it, display units, wrap values. So an example, uh, the default display for this game, we can find what is in the unit properties, edit remote settings. Down on the bottom, are all the default displays. You can actually also find these from setup remote control edit unit, but get to the same place, which is basically edit W1 settings. When you're looking at the display defaults in the edit dialog, you should know these are just the defaults for when you first assign a parameter, and they can be changed at any time by going to the properties panel to adjust them. Properties panel over here to the right. So let's try swapping the menu name and the menu value. There I'd be able to change the horizontal alignment to right, and on the menu value, horizontal alignment to left, and now I've just swapped that setting. It's very easy to do. I can change some names and display units. I'm gonna change, let's change the value name from gain to is gain four, so let's just make that, you can say that's volume. I can change the display parameter type. Instead of decibel, I can change it to a percent. That client would rather have that. Or to a count from one to 10, let's leave it at percent. I could change if I wanted to, instead of having volume, change the text to a symbol. So up here, text, you can turn it off, or I could change it to a symbol. I could then pick a custom symbol, go into my library. Let's just go to Webdings and pick out a little music symbol and make that my symbol. But if I find that's a little bit too far to the right, I can use my horizontal alignment, move that to negative 25, move it a little bit more to the middle, and play around with this. I mean, just, just to show you some of the capability you can get in and really make these custom for your clients. So now that I've just shown that off a little bit for some fun, let's get into the properties in more depth. I'm not going to go over each property, just hit some of the highlights of the W1 and show how the properties can be unique to each W series remote. So up here to the right, when I look at my properties panel for a W series, W1, I see that I have a brightness setting for the screen. This can be from one to eight. And you can notice that in the simulator immediately. A wake security setting that determines if the unit will go to sleep after a time. If I set the wake security to true, it opens up the pin to allow me to get back into the unit. Idle mode brightness. 
This can be set from one to five and it acts in conjunction with the overall brightness and allowing up to 40 different combinations of brightness when in idle mode. The idle delay is the number of seconds of inactivity before entering idle mode. Okay, display type, again, we showed that earlier. This can be um, applied anywhere that you see display type in this properties. You will be able to change it from text to symbol or just turn it off. Also, anytime you see horizontal alignment, you know that you have choices for left, center, or right. Anytime you see vertical alignment, you know you have choices top, center, bottom. Okay, offset. If you see offset, you know that uh, the left right incremental change you can make, you can use a negative or a positive number to move left or right. And the vertical offset, up or down incremental change you can make. You can use negative or positive numbers to move up or down. Uh, with sleep mode, if sleep mode is enabled, the screens are going to go dark in sleep mode and the previously set wake properties apply that you set up above. Sleep delay is the number of seconds of inactivity after entering idle mode before entering sleep mode. On the W1, W3, and W4 units, the encoder button mode is going to determine if the encoder button operates as a separate separate button menu or is in the encoder menu select, just like when we set it up in the dialog, you can also change that right here in the properties, so that lines up. The button operation timeout, uh, only when in separate button menu mode. So again, remember we said confirm changes only works for encoder menu select, so that's right here. If I move this to separate button menu, I have button operation timeout, that only works for the separate mode and that's the timeout time. There are certain extra properties for each mode that show, they'll show up and not show up depending on what you do. And that's kind of how Composer works to keep the, a cleaner screen or a cleaner view. I'll just jump down here. We got, to, I just want to move to the last one. It's just a point out, it's called bar graph. I can change that from completely disabled on the screen. I've got a moving bar choice uh, up or down it defaults to up again these properties are custom to any of the w series remotes that you're working with so they change as you work with different w series remotes so example when working with the w2 if you click on the simulator button you are going to be a collapsing expanding properties you're working with with that remote W2 choices over here. So we have the four buttons that will, if I click on them, open to the area that I'm working on automatically. So now this is button two that's open. Button three, so button two collapses, button three. So Composer helps you by opening and closing these properties as you work. Um, I'm gonna open the floor to any questions that you may have right now. If there are no questions, my name is Tony Cochran, and I want to thank you for attending this webinar on our W Series remotes.